we have 900 miles left until we reach the tip of Madagascar. And it's a beautiful day here out on the Indian Ocean. We left Chagos in our wake and we're about halfway through our 1,500 mile sail to the northern tip of Madagascar. We still had about 900 miles of sailing in front of us and some interesting navigation through the Mascarene Plateau. The Mascarene Plateau stretches from the Seychelles in the north to La Reunion over 1,200 miles to the south. And in lots of places it's shallow enough to wreck your boat. During the last Volvo Ocean Race, Team Vestas actually ran aground here. We needed to sail right over the top of it, so we were planning our course carefully. We are where this bullseye is, and the wind is continuously coming easterly from this direction on the chart. And we need to cut through this area here where it goes from like 2,000 meters to 20 meters. You need to cut through it at the right time or else it'll be really nasty and big waves and lots of currents and stuff. So you pick this point to cut through. But in order for us to get to that point, we need to go pretty much dead downwind. So we're going to try and see if it's comfortable and if there's enough wind for us to do it. So we'll put out the, the pole probably on the starboard side and then we'll put the main out on the other side and we'll read the book. We're gonna do... Wing on, wing on, wing. Wing on, wing on, wing on, wing. Wing on, wing on, wing on, wing. Wing on, wing on, wing on. Got our halyard wrapped around the, the deck light on the mast, so... We tried to pull it around, but... Brian has to go up and pull it free. When you're up on the mast and it's swinging like this, it just amplifies the movement of the boat, so. Hold on, brother. They're Dog. I just flew from one side of really? the boat to the other. Oh, there goes Girona. Just filming Brady and the squall. Squallage. Cruising. Yeah. Mm. Scary ones. What are you doing? It's gonna make a tea. I just put the kettle on. Oh yeah? Some water in there for me? Mm -hmm. For my tea? Yeah. Cool. So we took the main in and we're just cruising under the Genoa right now, but pretty nice conditions right now, we're just running dead down winds. There are like a few things to watch out for though, but we're, oh, we're here and we're in the middle of nowhere except there's these shallow bits, the mass green plateau. And if you look out here, there's 
20 meters, 18 meters, 20 meters, so it's not shallow enough to necessarily hurt the boat, but when you've got seas and current and it goes from like 2,000 meters to like 20 meters, it causes strange currents and unpredictable waves. So we're really trying to plot our course to avoid that and to get through this area in the deeper water by hitting this waypoint. So just on my night watch, it's about 1.30 in the morning and hitting at uh, 272 and degrees and we're going through a channel of really shallow spots and um, the depth meter went from like crazy like 50 meters and then 30 meters and I was like holy oh, fuck we're going into a reef and I started freaking out woke up Brady and um, basically we just need to change our direction a little bit and because there's heaps of you know 20 meter spots around here so we're not going to go into a reef so that's the good news <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty scary in the middle of in the middle of the ocean and you see the depth reading it was that. like 100 and i was like oh yeah it's a whale and then it went to like 50 and then 30 suddenly and i was like oh my god <laughs> pretty yeah not not cool See, we're right on the edge of so we're here we were going to go to this point and then brian's watch he was going to change course to hit here but i think now we're going to change course and just go straight from here yeah. i just woke up it's my watch max has been on since six i woke up in the middle of the night because i heard that um, when Brian was going to go on his watch, the thugs and Brady was up and I think the, the depth went up to 20 meters, um, which it can here because we have this grid, we're kind of sailing on this grid platform, so it can be very shallow. Um, and even though the, the charts can be sort of somewhat precise, we still want to keep a lookout. And, supposed to be 600 meters now but a bit ahead it's supposed to go down to 60 so we're just keeping a close look for any shallow spots that we can pass through um, but it looks okay I'm just it's just scary to sail to stuff like this during the night because you can't really see it properly and, and stuff so I'm happy it's safe time now so um, I think it's a few more like, three, four hours five hours left six hours then we're I'll do it. So, it's all good. Big changes in depth usually mean good fishing, so we had our lines out at the crack of dawn, and it was already paying off. It's a killer <laughs> within 10 minutes of each other. I a, knew it. A beautiful mahi and a yellow tuna. Yeah. It's a mahi! <laughs> we got it! We got a mahi! Oh, that's nice. Woo! No, no, dive on him, dive on him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, get on him, get on him. Oh, fucking. Nice one! Woo! 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 Look at all the girls lined up here, we're all like, <laughs> we're like, yeah, we're gonna marry! We're gonna marry! We got two! How much? Oh, 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 oh,
fish action going on back there. It's good stuff. So there's lots of different options to make for lunch. So many options. I think I'm going to make sushi. So we thought that we caught two uh, male mahis because they have more square heads and the female have more round now yeah, we're, and they travel in pairs so we thought that we would catch maybe two more females then but if you look at this one see that his head is a lot more like this like really like a square you see that uh -huh. and then you look at this guy and you compare the heads you see that this is a lot more round so this is actually the female and they all travel in pairs, so we caught the full couple, which is good. So they're not looking for their their companion out there. That's good. Yeah. Oh, mate. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Come on! Come on! Fish on! Come on! Organize with the hand! Come on, Max! Oh my god! Because we're dragging a carcass. Okay. One, two, three, come in! Oh! Making some sushi. We all caught four different fish this morning. Two mahi mahis, wahoo, and was it yellowfin tuna? No, it was a big eye. Big eye tuna. And it's my cooking day, so I'm making some sushi rolls for everyone. Everyone gets two each. And we don't have any fresh ingredients, so we're just doing rice and raw tuna. And there it is. Awesome. It's just a bit hard doing it with the boat really rolly, but I think everyone's really hungry, so I'm almost finished. Get in there. I think this is a new record for an absolute amount of fish caught. This is like mahi, no, wahoo, wahoo. This is mahi, mahi. There's bags of tuna somewhere. So it is a lot. We've personally seen the impact irresponsible fishing can have on the environment. In fact, we stopped fishing and eating seafood entirely for our two years sailing through Asia. It was that bad. But the Indian Ocean is much less populated, and there's less stress on the fish, especially this far out at sea. We only troll with hand lines and take what we can eat and freeze. If you'd like to learn more about sustainable seafood, a great website to check out is www.seafoodwatch.org. How's your watch? Yeah, it's a good one. Sun just went down, moon is coming up. Just had a delicious meal. Yeah, that fish was so delicious. Like, it feels, we haven't really had anything fresh in a while. Just having fresh fish. That's Me. Fun. Now I'm gonna have a good night's sleep on a full belly. For like an hour. 
Any thoughts of the day? Oh. Yeah. Fishing is fun when we catch fish, man. <laughs> Up next. I think we are sailing into a dark cloud. Shit. What's going on up here? Nally, Nally wind. It's actually kind of scary. I think it's the first time on this trip that I've actually felt kind of afraid. I saw something brown in Yosha's panties. Oh. I asked if it was poo, she said, no, it's chocolate. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, crazy? Doing my exercise. I feel like I've been sitting and standing. I mean, sitting and sleeping so much. I need to stand. So I'm trying not to hold on to anything. And just walking back and forth. Getting some exercise. Getting some exercise. <laughs> 